episode 40 of the Calon Yarns podcast. My name is Lynn and I'm coming to you from Cardiff in Wales in the UK and this is a knitting, spinning, sometimes dyeing, sometimes crochet but always fibre based fortnightly podcast. You can find me as Calon Yarns on Instagram or on Ravelry on all the general social media pages but yes this is kind of my journey through knitting projects, spinning projects, dyeing projects all of which are beginner, have a go, see what happens, and I hope a lot of you are the same. So yes, if you are a new viewer, and I've had a lot of uh, new subscribers lately, so if you are one of those new, sus new subscribers, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so, so much for joining us. And if you are a regular or returning viewer, as always, welcome back. It is lovely to see you, and I hope you are keeping safe and well blah blah blah, global pandemic, the desperation to get the other side. I'm not going to talk about that, that this week but just to say that we in Wales are just about at the end of our firebreak lockdown just as England goes into their month lockdown. So yes, crazy crazy times but as I say I hope your knitting or your spinning or your dyeing is giving you some joy and some peace and some calm because we all need plenty of that at the moment. So what have I been up to? <coughs> I think I've just inhaled some fibre because I've got some fibre to show you later. Uh, excuse me, I will have a quick sip of tea. Yes, what have you been up to? I have been finishing a couple of projects. Um, which I'm very pleased about to have them off the needles. So let me run through those first and then I have some works in progress. I think I've got a new cast on, like I, you know, I know I have cast it on, but I can't, I don't think I talked to you about it last time. Uh, so I have some works in progress and some dyeing stuff to show you as well as some fibre bits and bobs. Um, so yeah, let's dive on in. So as you saw at the beginning, I have finished da -da -la, my Soul Sisters socks by Jules Hill and these are a lovely pattern as if you've been with me for a while you will know I've been banging on about them for ages the fact that there's just one little panel of pattern in the front of the sock and it's easily memorizable so is a good alternative to a vanilla sock if you want something that you can memorize but you still want something that you can kind of um, watch TV with or take with you if you if you're going anywhere then this is a great great pattern um, the yarn I did it in is a hand dyed of mine I was just experimenting with some blues and blacks so it is um, a tweedy sort of yarn it's got these little brown um, what are they called nips in them maybe nips nups can't remember um yes so it has this pattern down the front which is sort of like a feather and fan i'll take it off the blocker actually you might be able to see it a little bit better um i haven't blocked these as yet but yeah a feather and fan pattern all the way down the front of the sock all the way down through to the toe um yeah and they fit wonderfully. They are a, a short row heel shaping pattern. So I completely followed what was in the pattern and they are toe up. Um, I'm really enjoying toe up. Haven't done one of those for a while. Glad to kind of be reintroduced back to that pattern. Um, yeah, so they're lovely. Ready to wear them. Um, blocking them, will I block them? I'm not sure that I will. I think I might just do it after the first wear, you know? I mean, come on, let's not let's not go crazy, huh? So yes, those are done and dusted. Recommend the pattern, we'll probably make another pair of those at some point. And then my second finished object, I know, who even am I at the moment? My second finished object is this hat. It's a Kate Davis hat uh, pattern and it is called um, Cottage Garden, I believe. And it is part of a book of hats uh, that she has, but I think you might be able to get the pattern individually on on Ravelry or wherever. Um, I think she does a lot of individual patterns in shops as well as maybe you can buy them individually from her website, I'm not sure. But yes, and I am obsessed with this pattern at the moment. I love these kind of blocky flowers. Uh, they seem to be in everything I'm doing at the moment. So. I'm tempted, we're having our kitchen done, I'll come to that later, it's very, very boring, but his 
completely ridiculous because the whole house has been completely turned upside down. You know what it's like whenever you're having anything done in the kitchen, you realize how much it is the heart of the home. So we have no kitchen. We don't even have a floor in the kitchen. Well, obviously there's, there's a floor. It doesn't just go into thin air, but you know what I mean? So they're digging down to the floor because we are having underfloor heating. Oh. Um, but yeah, so we have no cooker, no water, no nothing, no washing machine. So we're surviving at the moment on a microwave and a kettle and washing things up in the bath. So it's great, it's a great fun, especially now the winter's drawing in and there are big holes in the wall and um, it's really cold and we can't actually get to the boiler um, to turn it on. So oh, it's, we'll just leave that there because that's really dull. We're talking about this hat, this lovely hat. I don't even know why, never mind, this hat. So yes, uh, it is out of um, Rauma, I think the white is Rauma Lamoul yarn and the red is uh, the PT2, I think? No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. It's the Hillesvarg. Hillesvarg uh, brand is the red. So I'll just pop it on. Mess up the old hair. Which way around is it? Okay. So I, um, beanies wise, I find them a little bit not, see, that's not ideal, is it? That's not ideal. But what I do is I tuck it down at the back to make it, sit a bit flatter on my head so yeah i'm quite happy with that ready oh she says i can't see in the camera you see there we are i can't quite see it properly but i hopefully i look somewhat presentable but yeah love the pattern love the hat as all kate davis patterns are they're really clear really easy to follow and have a nice um clear chart and they do these uh central double decreases the crown which is always a really nice effect um, because it kind of balances out the colour work as you work up to the top of the hat. So there we are, will I do another one of those? Probably, it used hardly anything yarn wise so yes I have no doubt I will be doing another one of those. Um, and in terms of a hat, let's stick on the hat theme, so I have cast on a new hat but it is for um, a gauge swatch really for a sweater that I want to do. So this is also linked to the dyeing I did. Um, my husband wanted another jumper. I knitted him a jumper last year, year before, and he was like, when do I get another one? So uh, we had a little look through the Strange Brew book, which is the Tin Can Knits book. And it is fabulous. I been banging about on about this for ages so if you haven't had a look at it then do have a little investigate because it has some sweater patterns but it also is like a recipe book so if you want to do uh, they're all in the round but if you want to do a top down or a bottom up it shows you how obviously I'm not going to give it away but it shows you how you can um, develop your own pattern it even gives you some charts that you can choose from or you can use them as the charts in, in the actual patterns in here. But it shows you and explains how the construction of a yoked sweater works, whether it's bottom up or top down. So you can sort of come up with your own version, your own design. And that's what I've decided to do. So uh, my husband wanted something plain-ish, not too busy uh, in the yoke area, because he's got a couple of quite busy jumpers. So I have chosen to do the ice fall sweater design. So, but Lynn, you say, that is a lady's sweater. I feel like it matters. But it shows you how you can adapt that to a bigger size or a different yarn. So this is a four ply yarn, but I'm doing it in a DK. So because it shows you all the little, the sums and the mathematics of it, you can work out how to alter that for whatever yarn you have and you want to knit your sweater out of. If you want to do it a, a bottom a bottom up rather than a top down, you can alter all that because it explains how it all works. It's brilliant. So even though that is a top up, top up, a bottom up sweater, I want to do it a top down. I prefer to do top down. So I have taken the chart, I've turned it upside down so that I'm ready to create that yoke from the top down. I've worked out how I can do the 
increases rather than the decreases if it was going up and it sounds like I'm very bright and I've really thought it through it's all in here it's all in here it's really clear so don't be put off by adapting patterns and adapting things to what you want them to be and what you need them to be but the designs go from I think it's like one year old all the way up to um, uh, I think it's like a 50 55 inch chest maybe um, it goes a long way let me see oh I don't think I can find the page quickly uh, can't find it quickly but yes have a look check it out so what it also advises is that if you want to swatch um, why not swatch a hat because you get the sense of working in the round you get that rhythm going so sometimes when you swatch you're just kind of knitting for the swatch and it cannot uh, represent what your actual knitting is like for the sweater so if you're doing a hat or they say either a hat or a cowl pattern then at least you're doing something substantial you've got into the flow of it and it's a truer reflection of your gauge with your needle size and your yarn choice so that was a long-winded way of telling you I cast on a hat so yeah we're on the hat theme so this is the yarn uh, I am using and this is the snowfall is it snowfall or icefall icefall maybe pattern from the book so the sweater I'm actually going to make is um, the main color of the sweater will be the blue and the yoke pattern will be in the cream but I just wanted to see it the other way around really see how it worked um, so I might I might even have to pull this back if I don't have enough yarn uh, that I dyed myself but at least it's giving me a better idea of the gauge so as it stands my gauge is is right for the pattern right for what I need it to be and I measured um, another sweater of my husband's that he is comfy on him so I can get the correct chest measurements and the, the correct arm measurements so yeah so he might have a hat to match you never know Will I finish the hat before I cast on the sweater? I don't know. I think I'm pretty much there with the swatch uh, and my, my true gauge. I might just carry on with that for today because it's, it's always nice to do something quite small, isn't it? Um, yes, but the yarn itself. So this is from uh, the company Yarn Undyed, uh, which is a UK-based company. And obviously they send, uh, they do loads and loads of different types of undyed yarn. So if you are interested in experimenting with dyeing yarn, then hop on uh, to that website and have a little look because they've got lots and lots of different fibre blends, different yarn thicknesses, they have packs of 100 gram skeins, they do mini packs, etc. Um, so yeah, I bought a couple of packs and I dyed some up. So I'm going to insert here a little bit of video of the dyeing process um, of what I did because I did a few bits and bobs whilst I still had a kitchen. Oh, the heady days of having a sink and a cooker. Yeah, so I did it while I still had the kitchen, knowing that once we get the new kitchen, I was probably not going to be allowed to die in there anymore because I tend to make quite a mess. <laughs> but it didn't matter. It didn't matter with my kitchen. Um, so yeah, I'll pop in the little bit of a video there about um, how I came up with these colours. So I just thought I would show you the chaos of our kitchen. There's the wall gone. So as you can see, I don't think I'm going to mess it up with a little bit of dyeing this afternoon. It's rather grim. Um, yeah, so this is fun. You know, who, who needs doors on their cupboards anyway? So just about to get ready to soak a load of yarn.
Well, the other thing I want to have a go at dyeing today is um, in relation to this Fru Wahlberg skein, uh, which is in borderline, and it has these beautiful greens and golds in there. So I really want to to match something up with the green, so that the sweater is a, a, a greeny colour, and then this will be the yoke of the, the Zweig probably. And I'm kind of looking in here, I quite like those the sort of mossy, tealy greens in there. So I think I'm gonna try and get a match for that so it'll be quite a bright jumper, but we'll have this flash of color along the yoke. So that is the plan. the blue turned out so the navy dye I had I had I added a little bit of black to it and I also kind of just sprinkled a little bit of black into the water as well so it's come up with these slightly kind of darker speckles in it um, he didn't want a dark navy and he didn't want more of a, a lighter sky blue so it's given a nice balance I think it's probably a better, truer reflection of the colour back here than up close. And then this is just an undyed skein. So I've got two undyed skeins and I think I've got eight uh, of the, the blue that I dyed. So yeah, that's I'm really, really pleased with how it came out. Um, it's nice to be knitting in DK. I haven't done anything DK for quite a while. So hopefully I will have enough. We shall, we shall see. I should do with my, with the... Um, it also gives you yarn amounts in the book, so I think I should be all right with that. So he might get a hat as well as a sweater. We'll see, or I might need to reclaim that bit of yarn. See how we go. Um, so as you saw in the dyeing video, the other um, bits I did was this green. So this is how the green turned out. Uh, how's that doing? Yeah, that's probably the better colour. So it's sort of... It's a little bit brighter than I had planned, but I really love it. It's this high twist merino, um, and it is matching up with this Fru Wahlberg skein, as I showed you in the video. Uh, so yeah, this is a skein I bought at Edinburgh Yarn Festival, I think, last year, and I just wanted it to match with something nice and bright. So, very pleased with that how that's worked out so that it looks like it's going to be more of a kind of a spring sweater really I think with those colors um really bright and crisp this green so yeah I'm thinking of doing a Zweig with that um I think I said last episode so this will be the yoke across the top and then these lighter brighter greens will um will form the part of the sweater so I wear I have a, a Zweig I did a, oh, a while back so I wear it a lot it's a really lovely shape so yep that is that one when when will I cast that on we shall see and then I had one skein left over oh one poor little skein all on its own so I um, just put some autumnally colors together and it's not key put some autumnally colors together and just kind of experimented on the final skein so what will that become I don't know it was just pretty and I couldn't have it sat there being undyed so I went ahead and did a little something with it so yeah pleased with that there's some nice kind of um 
heathery tones in there. I don't know if you can read it because of the, the brightness of the light. So here this sort it's kind of heathery, um, it's coming up a little bit gold there, heathery browny colour there. So we shall see, we'll see how that turns out. So yeah, that was my yarn dyeing experiment. So now going back to what is actually on the needles. Um, so this morning I uh, cast off a sleeve, not the whole sweater, cast off a sleeve of my Erst sweater by Marta Nielsen. And oh my gosh, I can't wait for this to be done. I love this shape. It is a beautiful, uh, quite a, a nice little standy up neck. I did this on um, the main body size needles instead of the smaller needle size, which is a four. The body is in a five, but I did this on a five as well because I'm a little bit sensitive here. And this, this yarn, whilst it isn't scratchy, it is a little bit rustic. So I thought, well, if I open it out away from my neck a little bit, I'll also be able to wear um, a polar neck or something underneath it because it's definitely an an outdoor sweater, a, um, an outer garment. Love the raglan shaping. So I have finished this sleeve. Ta -da! Um, but I haven't cast it off yet because you're supposed to do three repeats of this little broken rib section here, but I've only done two because I'm not entirely sure how much yarn I'm gonna have left. So I've left that on the two and then I've got a little bit of yarn quite literally up my sleeve. <laughs> a little bit of yarn up my sleeve that I can finish that, that, I can make that sleeve a little bit longer if necessary. So I'm about to, to pick back up the stitches on the other sleeve. They're really oversized sleeves. I can't wait to show you on really. And then the bottom of it, is curling up a little bit. How can you say it? It's curling up a little bit because there's only um, one row of pearl, it seems, in the pattern for the edge. Uh, so again, I might pull that back. I might unpick that cast off edge. I've got some yarn left just to give it a little bit more of a solid. I'll probably replicate this um, broken rib at the top just to give it a little bit more weight at the bottom. And then, um, yeah. So I will also be cracking on with that sleeve this weekend. I thought I would have that finished uh, to show you this, this podcast, but what a fortnight of busyness. So um, yeah, I was trying to do it last night, but I was just too tired and I knew I was gonna make a mistake. So I just got to the end of the sleeve and then um, just put my knitting down and watched a bit of telly. Um, yes, what else have I got on the needles? So as I said last week, I uh, gathered together some bits and bobs of yarn from my stash for an exploration station by Stephen West. So this is the pattern. It's quite an old pattern now, I think. Um, but yeah, a perfect way of experimenting with different, um, different techniques and processes as well as using up some stash so I won't go through what I've what I'm going to do it in because I haven't got very far so hopefully when I get a bit more on the needles I can show you show you better if you are desperate if you're desperate to know what I'm doing out of if you watched last week's episode then I've, I've got all the yarn together there but I have made a start and it's a good job actually that I didn't get very far this is how far I've got yeah I know Ooh, I know, extreme times. But it's a good job I didn't get very much further because I told you that I had rescued a little ball of yarn from my mum's stash, which is a Louisa Harding. Um, but I didn't have enough and I had paired it up with an orange. But as I was fiddling about the other day, I found another one, yay. So I can use these together lovely orange uh, orange and greeny tones so yeah at least I can um, have a section have that section that is the same I thought I'm gonna have to either um, do the helical knitting or do it row by row but yes I found two so thank you mother obviously you were guiding me to find the other ball in her stash she's no longer with us sadly but she, she was probably kind of going there, there's an, there is another ball in there if I have to come there and find it myself, <laughs> that's what I can hear her saying. If I have to come there and find it myself, you're in big trouble. So 
I found it in the end. So yes, those are all the things that are not on the needles in the entirety, but those are all the things that are closest in my knitting nest at the moment. I haven't told you what I'm wearing. So this is the Botanical Garden Sweater by, uh, what's the name? I'll put it here. Apologies, Botanical Garden Sweater. I love, love, love this pattern. Um, it's so comfortable, such a great knit anyway, with these beautiful kind of hummingbirds along the edge. And uh, yeah, I love it. Uh, so check that out. Um, what else? So really, that's all the knitting stuff out of the way. Now I have some fibre that I've bought. So what I'll be talking about now is a bit more of fibre. Uh, and I will also let you know about what I'm up to generally. So if you're here for some fibre, fibre tales, um, John Arben Textiles. I had a little delivery from them this week. This is their uh, logo, etc. Open textiles and they are a UK based fiber company they also do yarn uh, for knitting and do you know what's great I mean there is they're a small mill um, and we often kind of see them out and about at yarn festivals and things there's been so missing yarn festivals this year but hand knitted card hand hand knitted now that would be a feat hand written card I always like that because you go somebody's taking the time to write that and you know they're a small company and they, they do have quite a lot of orders and customers etc but just to take the time to say thank you for your order those things are really special aren't they you have a sense of that you are that that's kind of a nice touch let's say a nice touch so that's lovely um anyway what did i buy so first things first i bought some exmoor sock yarn so it's not uh, a humbug as such, but it is these natural whites, I suppose, whites and greys. Um, can't quite see the grey very well on the camera, but yes, my plan is to spin these up and make some house socks. I'm obsessed by house socks at the minute, excuse the rustling. Um, I watch quite a lot of kind of, you know, uh, Scandi Noir dramas, and I've just finished um, uh, Borgen and yeah they've all got these lovely house socks so I'm determined to spin and to knit myself and my husband some house socks how can, often can I say the word house socks so there we go so that's one thing that I want to do and then I saw this on Instagram uh, and somebody had made a sweater out of it and it was absolutely gorgeous so I had to get some but seeing as I'm definitely in a sort of a colour work phase at the moment, I was like, oh, but I want to, to make a sweater with a yoke and I, I want to kind of jazz it up a bit. So I went for, this is a new range from John Arben. This is the Apple Door. Can you see that? Is it going to focus? The Apple Door and it's called Slack My Girdle. And I think... <laughs> But the other great thing about John Arben Textiles is the names of the fibres and the yarns. It's brilliant. So this glory of crazy colours is the Slack McGurdle. And it is a mixture of Romney and um, Devon, Devon Kloss, Close Wool and Exmoor Blue Face. But look at those. It's like a packet of sweets. So that will hopefully be the, the colour of whatever colourwork sweater I decide to make in like, you know, 2027 or something. And this is the, the lighter colour. Now this is called uh, Quench. So yeah, this one has the same sort of um, colour strands through it, but it is a much lighter, much whiter uh, fibre base. So yeah, I thought that would be fun <laughs> and hopefully It'll calm down in colour once it's spun up. But I don't know, maybe it won't grow up into a sweater, but I certainly thought um, that it was quite fun. I've been doing quite a lot of uh, autumnal colours and muted colours, darker colours. And when I saw that bit of bit of jazzy colour, I thought, yes, I fancy having a little go at that. So we'll see, we'll see how that, how that um, spins up. 
Um, but yes, in terms of anything else, have I bought anything else? No, that's all for now. Um, ticking away at stuff, I've got a little uh, a test knit on the go as well, which I'm really enjoying. So yes, that is all the knitting content really. So um, yeah, if you're leaving me here, I'll put a little link here if you want to kind of have some more knitting content or if you're a new viewer and you want to look back at some previous stuff, I'll put a link here to some other bits and bobs. But yes, on to life, what's going on? Let me just take a quick look. So as I said at the beginning, Wales has been in a two week fire break lockdown. So we're just coming out the other side of that. Um, work has still continued for me because I teach in a university and the universities have been able to stay open. So yes, yeah, so I've still been in work and busy. And I think at the moment, it is really busy. And I think you are probably exactly the same. Everything seems to take twice as long. So even down to getting the students in and out of the rehearsal rooms or classrooms takes twice as long because they have to be distanced as they come in. They've all got to do their hands, they've all got to do the, the track and trace. And then when they leave, we get them to um, wipe down their station or their chair, do their hands, blah, blah, blah. So, so that always takes twice as long. Um, and then because the house is in chaos, uh, washing up takes twice as long. Deciding what we're going to have for dinner takes twice as long. Uh, just everything seems to be huge effort at the moment. And in the grand scheme of things, it is nothing. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. But yeah, I think it's that um, coming to critical mass, as I say, of uh, trying to balance work and home and hobbies and families. And because we have come out of our lockdown, but England has gone into their lockdown, we haven't been able to go and see the kids uh, who are away at university. So that was the plan, that as soon as we were out of our lockdown, we would pop and see them, um, but they've gone in to theirs. So we can't see them for at least another month. And I was thinking about this the other day, I think this is, well, I not think, this is the longest we've gone without seeing the children. Um, and it just feels weird, really weird they're absolutely fine and we're absolutely fine and I know some people haven't seen their family for well since March probably February March time um, but it's just an odd concept of them being a couple of hours away but not being able to get at them and I have no doubt that many of you with parents uh, in um, care homes or family members in hospital or in different countries or we are all in the same boat so yeah it's a trying time for us all isn't it um anything else no nothing sorry my memory card decided to uh exhaust itself then so yes anything else no nothing really surviving uh work family building work etc all is fine but we are healthy and uh well so we haven't really got anything to moan about at all and i have enough projects to keep me going if uh if i had to kind of stay indoors for a year probably um my plans for the weekend i really want to get some spinning done this weekend uh that's kind of fallen off my list for the last couple of weeks really and i do find it really relaxing so i will after i've done this and i've edited it edited it together i will try and find some time to get a bit of spinning done and uh yes i might be able to film a little bit of that i've been watching quite a lot of spinning videos yesterday uh yesterday this week of um just people spinning they're not saying anything, they're not doing anything, but just that the whir of the wheel and the creation of the yarn is very mesmeric. So uh, yes, I might film a little bit of that and tuck it onto the end of a video if that's a, of, of interest to any of you at all. But that is now enough from me. I will let you go and get back to your projects, get back to whatever you're up to, but I hope you all are keeping safe, keeping well as always. Do drop me a comment give them the old thumbs up, subscribe if you don't already. And uh, yeah, I'll either see you here or on Instagram is the best way to get hold of me. So yes, take care all. Thank you so much for dropping by. Dioch pao, bye.